ودرس كده نقدر ان احنا نطبقه في حياتنا طيب الاسبوع اللي فات كان معانا دكتور سمير وكان بيتكلمنا عن اللوك داون ومن اول واول نقطه دكتور سمير كان بيقولها ان احنا وي هاف تو ابلاي كانت تو ثينك ان ا بوزيتيف مانا ويمكن هي هو ما قدرش بسبب ضيق الوقت ان هو يتكلم في الموضوع ده فتره طويله بس كان ترتيب ربنا ان احنا معانا النهارده دكتوره ميرات هتكلمنا على الايجابيه عامه في حياتنا او هاو ان احنا نقدر نفكر بشكل ايجابي يعني وي ار ان ديسبرت نيد بتهيالي جيفن يعني ذا امونت اوف انسرتينتي اللي احنا داخلين عليها وترانزيشن واحنا كلنا يعني او مش يعني انا عن نفسي اخذت على عاده البيت قوي الصراحه كرسي جبت كرسي جديد ومش قادر اسيبه الصراحه ومش متخيل ان انا هنرجع ونركب ترينز والكلام دوت ف يعني كلنا مشتاقين للكلمه دي يا دكتوره ميرات ربنا يديكي نعمه كده و... و... ويساعدك Thank you. Um, and I agree. I think we've all gotten very comfortable uh, and this lockdown's become, it's been quite hard for a lot of people. Um, and I think this idea or this almost um, commandment uh, to maintain positive outlook and to think positively, I, I think it's very necessary right now. Um, and a lot of us might... be enjoying the lockdown. I know my husband's absolutely loving <laughs> the time he has at home with us. Um, but for most people, I think this time is a time where we become fearful of the unknown, the uncertainties, what's to come, our jobs. A lot of things have changed. Um, a lot of us have missed our families and our loved ones. And I think all, this, all of this negativity in the world and all, everything that the media is, is spilling out on us is filling our minds and making us have this negative outlook. And I think coronavirus aside, I think we all struggle with this, um, you know, negative thinking. And it's a, it's a thing we struggle with that we've struggled with since the beginning of time and since the fall um, of Adam and Eve and the fall of humanity. I think we're... We're burdened by our sin. We're burdened by the fall. We're burdened by past trauma or something that's happened to us. We're burdened by what people have told us and what people have made us believe about ourselves and about the world. And all of this manifests in negative thinking. And it makes us think and act and feel that way. And it makes it really hard to maintain a positive outlook. So I guess... One, know that this is normal. This is something everybody struggles with. Even though some people might struggle with it more than others, if you are one of these people, you are not alone, all right? So you are not the only one who ever thinks negatively like that. There are so many other people, all of us included, that have moments or even live out a life where we think negatively and we want to, all change to have a more positive outlook and today hopefully I'll give a few practical steps um, about how we can change our thinking from negative thinking to positive thinking and in a way fulfill the very purpose that God has for us in this life by just doing that okay so that's what we'll try and go through so Firstly, you're not alone and everybody struggles with. The third thing I want to focus or point out before we go into all the practical things is that this is not a quick fix. I'm not going to wake up tomorrow and say, all of a sudden, I think positively and the world is rainbows and sunshines and everything is great. It's not a, a overnight thing. It's not going to change in a snap of a finger. It is a daily walk. It's a daily commitment to this life. It is a choice that I make every single day to think positively and to erase or replace my negative thoughts. It is something I need to constantly struggle with. Just like sin, I will fall. I will get back up. I will fall again. I will get back up. If my negative thinking is a result of past trauma, or being brought up in a house where I've been told over and over that I'm not good enough or that I can't do 
these things because of X, Y, Z. I've been living a life where I've been put down and I'm surrounded by negativity or I've just exposed myself to terrible friends growing up um, and people that have just fed me such negative thoughts or just read the media constantly and been fed by society. This is going to be especially hard and it's something I need to commit to. I need to throw everything into this so that I can see results, okay? So all of these practical steps are practical for a reason. These are things that we can do and they're things that we can do every single day to try and reach this end where everything is positive and we can have the same mind of Christ. So they're the three kind of points I just want to point out before we get started. So our thoughts, the way we think, is basically it's the hub of our life, right? So these are the headquarters. My thoughts are the headquarters for how the rest of me behaves, for how the rest of me feels, and then what spills out onto others. So I need to address whatever is hindering me from, you know, from spilling out hope uh, and spilling out the peace and love of God. So a few quotes I want to start with, which I think will just help guide the discussion a little bit. Um, There's a quote I found that's actually by an anonymous author. I don't know who said this uh, or wrote this. Whatever you hold in your mind will tend to occur in your life. If you continue to believe as you have always believed, you will continue to act as you have always acted. If you continue to act as you have always acted, you will continue to get what you have always gotten. If you want different results in your life or your work, all you have to do is change your mind. So we need to change our mind, and that's what we're going to try and think about or go through today and practically what does that mean? How can I actually change my mind and change my thoughts? Rick Warren, um, the author of The Purpose Driven Life, said the way you think determines the way you feel and the way you feel determines the way you act. So if all my thoughts are negative, negative, everything is negative, nothing's good, I'm not good enough, Every, you know, the world is bad, this is just going to end badly, um, there's no positivity, that is how I'm going to act. Everything I do will not have a positive outcome. How can it when my thoughts are hindering that. And some of us think negatively. We mentioned that experience is a big thing. Upbringing is another big thing. And what we feed our minds is huge. Um, But, you know, some of us, I think, maybe force ourselves to think negatively for fear of hopelessness and despair. So, for instance, if I have a big exam coming up, Sometimes I will make myself believe that I'm going to fail because I'm scared of failing. So if I make myself believe that I'm going to fail and I've gone in with that mindset, then if I fail, I'm not as disappointed. So I think ultimately, even if it is experiences or upbringing, I think the root of all of this might actually be fear. And so we need to address a whole lot of things in here and change that so that what comes out is actually positivity and what spills out onto others is that fervence and that hope of Christ. So let's think about, let's go back a little bit and just think about what our purpose is here on earth, our purpose as Christians. So Christ told us that we are the light of the world. We are the light of the world. The city that is set on a hill can't be, you know, um, put out or put under a lampstand. We need to be that light. So I need to have a really hard think about where my thoughts are putting me in light of that commandment. Are my negative thoughts making others see negativity see a christian who's so negative and therefore just assume 
or believe that Christ can't save. That's almost ultimately what the message that we're sending by our negativity and our lack of positivity. It's almost like we are sharing the false message that there is hope in the gospel of Christ. So I know that sounds extreme, but I think this extreme, this truth, is what needs to drive us to make this change. Because I know a lot of people who are very negative. And it's almost like, you know, sometimes you have the negative thoughts, the fleeting ones, and some of us think it's no big deal. But a lot of us, it is all we think. It is all that spills out. We've all had a conversation with someone who has said something negative about, themselves or their lives and you know you try and make it a bit positive oh you know thank god whatever or at least you have this and it's just complaint after complaint after complaint after complaint you don't want to be in a conversation with that person imagine what a non-christian sees what message are we sending others by our negativity so for us to spread the hope and the truth of the gospel we need to be positive We need to be filled with that hope and the truth because that's what will spill out. If I'm truly filled by that hope, by the truth of the gospel and salvation, that's what's going to spill out on others, that positivity. So, yes, it's a big deal. So for everyone thinking this isn't a big deal, it is a big deal. And it it may seem like a tiny fox, but it's the tiny foxes that destroy everything. So we need to make sure we are not denying others the chance to meet Christ through us, all right? Um, I listened to a a talk once by Johnny at church um, and he was talking about service and he was saying, um, you know, service doesn't have to be a big big thing, a a big task that you do, Um, but everyone will meet someone in their journey to Christ. Say there are 11 tiles between that person and Christ and I am number, I am tile number six. My only role is to be a faithful tile number six. I need to be faithful enough in my duty as a Christian and as a fellow member of Christ. I need to be faithful in my role so that I can get them to tile number seven and then they can move forward in their journey. They will meet all these other people. But when they meet me, I need to do the faithful job. I need to be faithful in my role. God has entrusted us with being that light. So now I need to fulfill that. And I can start with my thoughts. So the ultimate strategy, and we'll go through steps, but the ultimate strategy is not to remove the negative thoughts but to replace them um so we know the parable where you know uh, he cast out seven demons and then because they left and the place was empty seven more came in so we don't want to remove and make space for other terrible things to enter we want to replace with positive so that's what we want to do and these are the steps we're going to go through and again this isn't a quick fix it's a daily walk It's a choice I need to make every single day and I need to train the negativity out. I need to train myself to push the negativity out and to replace it with positivity. It's a training process. Just like when you're dieting, if you're really craving ice cream, you're not just going to sit there and say, I'm not going to have ice cream, I'm not going to have ice cream, I'm not going to have ice cream. You're going to have ice cream, you're probably going to have something worse because you'll binge later if you just don't have anything. Instead, we replace it, you know, so we have maybe yogurt instead or a fruit, whatever, something to, you know, quench the appetite. So what we need to do here is replace. So a few steps. The first thing, um, and I think the, the primary thing that we need to start with is to talk about it. We can talk about it with our father of confession. We can talk about it with our 
spiritual mentor or a spiritual leader that we look up to, but we need to bring it to the surface. When these thoughts are concealed, even though people may see the negativity and this is how I'm feeling and this is, you know, how I act, when my thoughts are concealed, we can then further convince ourselves that these thoughts are true. And we create worse thoughts from the original thoughts that we've created. And it just spirals. For instance, if someone's upset with you, or you think someone is upset with you, I do this a lot, you know, if they say something a certain way um, in a text message, it's like, oh, I, I must have done something wrong. And in my mind, I've I've curated this narrative that this person is upset with me because they, you know, didn't put a smiley face at the end of the text message. If I dwell on that, I will create more and more lies out of that original guess. Whereas if I confront them and I ask them and I bring that thought out, I bring it to the surface, the devil can't play with it and that person can quickly debunk that myth that I'm you know that they're upset with me they can quickly tell me no that's not true sorry you misunderstood we need to bring these thoughts to the surface we need to bring them out so that we can tackle them and see them up front if it means talking to your confession father great and they can give you a few more tips and a few psalms and a few things to read a spiritual mentor someone you look up to someone you can talk to about what the venture is that you're about to start. So I'm about to, you know, start um, attacking my negative thoughts. Can I have some accountability? And that person can just check on you every now and then. The second thing, very important, is to read a lot. Read a lot. Immerse yourself in scripture. Immerse yourself in the word of God. Immerse yourself in other spiritual books, not necessarily ones that talk about our thoughts and, you know, how to attack them, but just spiritual books, spiritual wisdom. When we fill our minds with godly truth and spiritual wisdom, we clean out that negativity inside. There's no room. Our minds can only be filled with so much. So we need to drown out the noise of society, of the media, of whatever's going on that's feeding my negativity. And I need to fill my mind with scripture, with the truth of the word of God, with spiritual wisdom. I need to fill it. In John um, chapter 15, verse 3, He says, Christ says, you are already clean because of the word which I have spoken to you. His word cleans us. So I need to fill my mind with his word so that it can clean my insights. So over time, the more I immerse myself in the reading of scripture, of spiritual books, the more my thoughts will be purified. It's a natural process. It's a natural process. And I know a a lot of excuses around reading, you know, come down to time. Um, And a lot of us think we don't have time to read. And actually that was a lot of, that was my excuse for a long time. And then I discovered this great app called Audible, which basically has books that you can listen to. And there's also a Bible app. Um, that's an audio Bible and you can listen to it on your way to work. So you can feel, you can fill your mind with these truths wherever you are, on the way to work, at work, during lunch. You know, if you're going for a walk, whenever you get a chance, if you're ever on the phone, maybe just put it on Do Not Disturb and listen to something instead. We can listen to sermons. We need to make the time. And we all have time. Um, if we look at, there's this, competition I've been running with my husband where we look at our screen time um, and the 
amount of time we each spend on our phones. The, the phone, the iPhone has this feature where if you turn it on at the end of each week, it tells you how good or bad your screen time was that week, whether you're up or down um, and whether you reduced it or increased it and where you spent most of your time. Have a look at your screen time and sacrifice 10 minutes a day to read something instead of going on YouTube or instead of going on social media, instead of looking up funny videos, whatever it is you're doing, sacrifice, just replace, start with 10 minutes a day where we read a chapter or a passage or something from a book instead. And, of course, there's also the audio options. So talk it out with someone, read a lot. Thirdly, pray. And I mean pray in the true sense of prayer. Prayer is not me dumping my burdens on Christ all the time. Prayer needs to be me standing in awe of him, me entering his presence every single day and realising the magnitude of his glory, sitting at his feet and recognising who it is that is in front of me, that is around me, that is inside me, who my God truly is. So we need to practice prayer differently. And I'm not saying don't dump your burdens on him. Of course dump your burdens on him. But that shouldn't be the primary goal of prayer. Prayer is to be immersed by him to immerse ourselves completely in him. So instead of focusing, standing in prayer and focusing on my failures, my insecurities, my needs, the more I focus on all these things, the more negative my thoughts will naturally be. If I stand in front of God every day and all I say is, Lord, I'm struggling financially. Lord, help me with this. Lord, help me with this. You haven't done this. Why is this happening? Why have I failed? And I leave prayer with just having dumped all of that on him. Then I've reminded myself of everything that makes me think negatively and I haven't been filled with him. So prayer needs to include um, thanks. So we start by thanking him. And then we trust him. We might say, instead of just dumping the burdens, we say, Lord, financially I'm really struggling, but I trust you. I trust you're in control. So we twist the dumping of our burdens into a trust exercise. And lastly, praise and glorifying him and acknowledging again who he really is. So the more we immerse ourselves in him, the less I think about all these things that are making me negative. I can't. I can't think about all of those things in his presence, in his glory, when I know how sovereign and how great he is, when I've completely immersed myself in him. Again, I'm going to repeat it again. This is a journey. It's not an instant fix. This is a journey, and our journey in prayer is also a journey. It's not a a one-day thing. It's something we need to do daily and practice daily and remind ourselves of daily. But I need to adore God again. I need to get to the point where my prayer is adoration of him and that transforms me. So as long as God is on his throne, I know that he is in control and I am standing in his presence, in the presence of the Almighty. So my prayer should be thankful, trusting, praising or adoring and not a complete focus on my insecurities and my failures and everything that's making me so negative, but turning that to a focus on him and trust in him. So he will naturally then consume me and my negativity will just eventually go away. But it's a journey. So I've talked about it. 
I've read a lot or I keep, I keep reading a lot. I change the way I pray. And finally, and this is kind of where the practical things come in as well, I need to reject the negative thoughts as they come. So um, in, let me just get the reference for you, 2 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 5, bringing every thought into captivity to the obedience of Christ. Um, the church fathers have this analogy where um, your thoughts are like planes uh, coming to land in an airport and I need to choose. Thoughts will come. I can't stop the thoughts from coming. I can't stop the planes from circling the airplane. But I need to choose which ones I allow to land. Okay, I need to take these thoughts captive. I need to be very mindful and very active in what I allow to land in my mind. So I have to commit to this process. Again, it's an active process and it's an active process to try and replace the devil's tricks and the negativity with positivity so that I don't allow this negativity to be what spills out onto others. And then ultimately I can fulfill my life as a Christian. I don't mean for it to sound simplistic. It's not. It is a difficult process. So we just need to make sure we commit to this process. So there are seven steps that I've written down that I think will help in rejecting these negative thoughts and replacing them with positive ones. So this is the, the mindfulness that we need to take into account when we're starting to think negative or when we're trying to change our thoughts. The first one, surprise, surprise, is to change our thinking, okay? So whenever we have a negative thought, our brain releases chemicals and these chemicals make us feel bad. And if enough of these chemicals are released, we can have, we can see physical effects of these chemicals in our body, like breathing um, and, you know, our rapid breathing and sweating and, and heart rate changing, a whole lot of things, right? We can have effects on our digestive system, lots of different effects. And this is essentially what happens in a lot of conditions like anxiety and depression and other mental health disorders. But if we just go back a little bit, whenever we have a negative thought, these chemicals are released and we feel bad. In 2 Timothy um, chapter 1, verse 7, he says, For God has not given us a spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. So I need to realise what spirit is within us. Again, maybe my negativity is because of fear. For, I fear getting my hopes up and then being disappointed. But that's not the spirit God gave me. So I am, first step is we need to think, how do I change the way I think? So I need to remember, when I have a negative thought, how is this making me feel? And I can't let that thought dwell. Just like the aeroplane in the airport example, I cannot let that thought land. The thoughts will come. I can't stop the thoughts coming. But once I have that negative thought, let it continue flying over. I need to attack that thought some way. And we'll find out how in the next few steps. The second thing is if that thought is actually a positive thought, just like negative thoughts have an effect on the chemicals in our brain and therefore how our body reacts, the same goes with a positive thought. Chemicals are also released and they make us feel good. I need to reinforce any positive thought that comes. I need to write it down. I need to dwell on it. Almost like 
Um, you know, when they t tell you pairing with kids, when even if, even if they do something wrong, you try and reinforce the positive behaviour. Try and get them to remember and think about what is positive and get them to do it again because you said good job or I really like the way you shared. Commend yourself, reinforce the positive thought. The third thing, and this is what's going to help us attack the negative thoughts when they come, is to meditate on God's word. So if I go back and we go back to the point where we read a lot and I've filled my mind with scripture, when a negative thought comes, I can take that thought, shoo it away with the truth of the gospel. And I can battle that thought with the truth that Christ has told me. So I need to fill myself with his word and now I need to meditate on his word. So I need to write down verses that tell me of the truth of God and who he is and who I am. I need to remember and bring to memory the spiritual truths that we were reading about before. So thoughts, they're powerful and they have the power to make us feel good or bad. But God keeps us. And God's word will clean our minds and God's word will keep us at peace and I need to keep remembering that truth. And that's how I'm going to combat the negative thoughts and that's how I'm going to help keep and reinforce the positive thoughts because it aligns with God's truth. So I need to fill myself with God's word. So that's step four. Fill myself with his word. So although thoughts are automatic and they just happen, the bad ones still happen. I then take them captive, as they say in Corinthians, and I need to fill myself with his word so that I can reject the negativity. Point number five is to be warned, to not linger on a lie. Our thoughts lie to us all the time. And unfortunately, the negative ones have the power to steal our joy. But we can then change them so that they do not take away our happiness. So it comes, I change the way I think, I grab that thought, I take it captive, I fight it or I shoo it away with the truth of the gospel and the power of scripture and the power of God's word. And I do not let it take away my joy. Point number six, and I think is an important one, and it might not be very, um, it might be new to a lot of people. Not many people do practice this, but I think there's such power in journaling and writing things down. Maybe you want to write down the positive thoughts so that you can reinforce them, so that you can remember them. Maybe you want to write down verses and contemplate on these verses and write down prayers of how God can use this truth to combat the negative thoughts. There is a power in writing things down. And I think it's a good reminder for us of the grace of God and what he does for us over time. It's a great thing to have handy and look at it at the end and say, look where God has brought me and look what he has done for me. So I think there's beauty in journaling. And a few verses that I thought um, maybe can help us out in terms of why I need to take this seriously. And I think journaling is a, quite a serious step. We've committed to writing things down and making this change. In Colossians 3, verse 2 to 5, Set your mind on things above, not on things on earth. For you died and your life is hidden with Christ in God. When Christ, who is our life, appears, then you will also appear with him in glory. Therefore put to death your members which are on earth, fornication, uncleanness, passion, evil desire, and covetousness, which is idolatry. So I need to set my mind on things above. I need to make the effort 
because Christ will then allow us to appear with him in glory. I need to really put my spiritual life to the test. I need to make changes. In Ephesians 4, verse 16, from whom the whole body joined and knit together by what every joint supplies, according to the effective working by which every part does its share, causes growth of the body for the edifying of itself in love. Every part of me needs to work. If my thoughts are hindering me and hindering my purpose, these need to change. So I need to take ownership of this. I need to take a stand and I need to commit. And journaling will help us be accountable for that. And finally, the seventh step is now I can rejoice and rest in his peace. If I take this journey seriously about changing my thoughts and replacing the negativity with the positive thoughts, I will be so much happier. Negativity takes away our happiness, but positivity brings joy. It brings joy. All we see is God's grace and God's love and his peace and everything that he's done for us. All I see is him because I'm immersed in him. It is what is spilling out. I can't help myself. And it's what others will see. And that's how I become the light of the world. And I become that light that God intended for me to be. So I need to take a step back, have a look at my thoughts, really examine myself and commit to making this change. So a few things as well that we can help day to day, you know, if you're out, a lot of the time we don't take journals with us and we're not just able to write things down on the go. But the more we read, the more we can kind of bring to memory a lot of verses and a lot of psalms that can help us tackle a lot of our thoughts throughout the day. But just say arrow prayers throughout the day. Just shoot up prayers to God every time a negative thought comes. You might not have your full toolbox with the Bible there or, um, you know, maybe you don't remember everything that you've read so far. But shoot up an arrow prayer. You've been hit with a negative thought. Take it captive. Lord, I need your help to get rid of this thought. Replace it with one of your truths. Come now. Psalm 70, make haste to help me, O God. Maybe just say, make haste to help me, O God, in that spur of the moment. We need to make this change. And it's a daily commitment. It's a daily walk. It's very difficult. It's not easy because the whole world is spitting negativity at us. And now we need to change what the world is feeding us with the truth of God's word. And we need to let that fill out so that then can spill out onto others. And glory be to God forever. Amen. Merci khalas, Emirat. Yani, kelma jameela awi. Yani, bsalaha, since you started it, and you started with, we have, instead of feel and act, we need to think and act. That by itself, I think, was um, yani, it's um, it's 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 a very deep learning curve for everyone, especially yani. We are people who comes from the background when they laugh. We all Allah magalu khair. But pretty much, it's um, it's as you said, yani. It's not gonna change in one day or two days, but at least bringing the awareness, yani, and this could be all rooted to our fears. It's something we really need to consider. And I, and I, yeah, and I personally feel am I in the, yes, we can't control our feelings, we can't control our initial thoughts, um, but we can definitely control our actions. That's something that we we have to work on, not just for us, I think, but Spardu for our kids. whatever we act, they just watch us and learn. They are like sponge, and they keep on yeah, and imitating whatever we do. Um, I think, Yani, if if really, Merit, Yani, if you can get us, Yani, these points, the seven points you mentioned, Yani, can give us summary, Yani, for it, and we basically would be more than happy, Yani, to share it with everyone. Um, 
it, it, it's really, I think it's, it's easy to forget, but it's, it's, it's really worth to do. يعني, even if we start to work one by one يعني, every day. يعني. Um, I think يعني, positivity والإجابية, the next week, inshallah, I will be with Samuel Maher. ومش وهيتكلم عن اللحظه الاخيره <تصفيق> ف ان شاء الله تبقى لحظه ايجابيه كلنا هنبقى يعني هنقدر نطبق اللي احنا بنتعلمه النهارده امم نيكست ويك هوبفلي يعني نكون ان شاء الله يعني بنضيع من الكنيسه و هوبفلي يعني ذا ويكس افتر يعني ود بي ايبل يعني تو هاف تو سي يعني اول يور فيسز ونشوفكم كده يعني 3 دي مش 2 دي يعني ربنا معاكم و stay safe و look after yourself و pray for us و المجد لله دائما ابدا امين